we are live. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 22. Uh, it's me, Sean, uh, your host of the Freestyle Podcast with my co-host, uh, Miles. How are you, Miles? Hello, everybody. I am great. Thank you very much, Sean. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Miles, you know something that I heard the other week, actually, on Instagram? It always makes me wonder, you know, when we say, I'm your host and this is the co-host. And in your mind, normally... When you're thinking about a pilot, you put it into tears, like this is the pilot, this is the co-pilot, like the other pilot isn't as good as a job. Yeah. But in actual fact, they're both exactly the same. And he comes to mind, and uh, the guy who's sitting there silently, patiently waiting, he's returned uh, from the last episode. You would have seen him on Backstage Live at any of our great training events. It's Chris Mills. How are you doing, Chris? I'm all good. If you two are the pilots, mate, I'm the passenger here, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm kicking it back down here. Yeah, all good. Thank you, boys. How are you both? You good? Yeah, uh, really good. Uh, thanks for joining again, uh, Chris. You had a few fans in the episode uh, last week. A lot of you brought along a lot of your backstage live posse as well. So good to have everyone on board. Um, and yeah, everything's good. Obviously, it's a bit of a strange one because away from all of the usual craziness of talking around the current climate, uh, it's Halloween. Halloween's uh, just around the corner this weekend. Spooky season. Spooky season indeed, and uh, I was just wondering, kind of, Halloween, when I was, this is going to show my age, I'm, I'm bloody old now, but Halloween was never such a big deal, maybe there was a movie come on TV, and there was some trick-or-treaters, but uh, it's now, so that, like, the UK have really taken on board the way the Americans do it and grasp the full commercial value of Halloween. I was wondering and curious to know how you guys how you guys treat your views on Halloween and if you've got any stories to share around it. Um, my interest in Halloween always depends on whether or not I've been invited to a Halloween party. As, uh, as an, it, a lot more yeah, fun, and right? it, it's yeah, it's been that way since probably about the age of fifteen, sixteen. Once you once you get past, I don't want to dress up to go and knock on people's doors. You okay. find yourself, there's like a few years where Halloween's just, me and my friends are going to put our hoods up and buy a screen mask, knock some knock some doors and we're out in the street and see what miles. we can get. You only live like 10 miles in that direction, maybe even not even that much, but at least you guys actually went to the effort of buying a screen mask. Around my area, the, the grimy council estates in, in uh, Warsaw and Winsbury, the kids used to just put their hood over there. That put their hood over their like heads, kind of like, but with their rears sticking out. Wait, I'll show you. Just like that. And then they just <laughs> say trick or treat. And it was terrifying. And they were about seventeen. You know what I mean? No, that's that's ridiculous. Mate, I'll throw it out. There. I don't don't think I've ever dressed up for Halloween ever. Really? Yeah, mate. Oh, I'm just so just good. not into so it, funny. mate. Like, I I watch a scary film, maybe. I'll buy some sweets for the kids and then not open the door yeah. and eat them all myself. <laughs> so, Miles, yeah. Chris, when I first met Miles, uh, and like you, you, you do the usual thing, you, you meet someone, you add them on. Um, so actually, I knew Miles through social media before I'd actually met him. Uh, with him. <laughs> but that's for a story for another time. But, <laughs> but I went through his pictures and I once saw him dressed up as a... But what did you do now, Miles, for a Halloween? Blade was Blade. one of the most Blade. recent ones. Blade, and I'll tell you, it was the, it was, it, I, I thought, this is my kind of guy, man. The way he took that on, full out Blade. Yeah, you know, had, I mean, he looked had the vest, had the sword, had the teeth, the blood, the glasses. Oh man, when it, when it's when it's Halloween, unless I get, if I don't get invited to a costume party, then I'm like, well, there's nothing to do as an adult. Like Chris said, um, maybe watch a horror, but it depends what horror. Well, actually, it used to depend as a kid, but now you got Netflix and all that, so you just. Pick your favourite horror movie. Yeah, but they're bringing out a new new horror movie, aren't they? Uh, this Halloween, I think. Uh, do you remember that? Do you remember that old school old school film, um, Hocus Pocus? Yes, the Three Witches. Yeah, they're doing a new one now with what's the name? Um, Anne Hathaway, is it? They're doing a brand new one that's dropping this Halloween, I think. So yeah, that might that might be worth a watch, but. I might have Besides to check that out. While, while really we're on want, movies, like, between you two, I want to know, what is your favourite type of movie? So when it comes to horror movies, do you prefer the slashers? So your uh, Friday the 13th, your Nightmare on Elm Street, your Halloweens, or do you prefer the sort of... 
<laughs> ghost, ghost, spirit, demon, exorcist, um, Annabelle, the Conjuring. What, what's your scare? Are you the, are you the thriller? Are you more jump scare hacks? I'll, for, I'll start then. I think um, I'll get more scared from the ghosts and like the, the weird stuff than the hack and slashers. Because in my head, I always think, if a hack and slasher came up and tried to attack me, at least I could hurt him back. Whereas if a ghost come up to me, how am I going to fight off a ghost? Like, you do, you know, you do I mean? know Jay. You do know Jason has super and human strength, and Freddy attacks you in your dreams. You can have a hard fight. Yeah, but ignore <laughs> that. Ignore that, Miles. Come off it. If, so yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, let, 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 let us know in the comments and add to this add to this debate as well. But I'm just going to clarify that for me, I uh, no surprise not seeing all the horror movies. We've done we've clarified my movie uh, repertoire there, but um, I do like a psychological thriller, which is as close to a horror movie as I'm going to get. I do not like these. That I don't like sitting down to watch a movie where I'm going to get scared. I don't want to be scared about for anything in my life, so I'm not going to spend time and pay money to give someone the privilege to do that but however and as a uh, as a father miles you might want to keep this one in your repertoire for in a few years time having the same conversation with my mom and dad recently they'd had my nephew uh, sleep over and my niece and they tricked one of the nephews tricked my dad i don't think my dad was paying attention basically they put like a horror movie on they had a horror movie on uh, i don't know what, what the situation was but <clears throat> my dad let it play out for a little bit and then he said later on in the night, he, uh, they were talking about it. He played play it when he realised, turned it off. But it must have had that effect that we've all had as kids when you've seen a horror movie. And then you've absolutely been petrified afterwards because he got my nephew to go downstairs or upstairs for something and no one was there. And he said the way that he heard those, those feet go up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> coming down. And I was asking my nephew about it. He was like, yeah, I was petrified, man. You know what I mean? So they have that effect on you for sure, don't they? Those, the gory ones. I'm thinking like back in my day, it was the, the Chucky, the Freddy Krueger, which is Nightmare on Elm Street. I didn't, I didn't get as far as watching any of the Jason ones, but the way a movie can scare you, hey, it's an interesting one. What about yourself, Miles? Um, I'm with a bit of both. So I'm with Chris that, the scarier Halloween, uh, Halloween or horror movies are always the ghost or demon. And it's for that reason why I don't watch them. And I only watch like the hack and slash ones like Freddy, Nightmare on Elm Street, even though a lot of the newer ones are rubbish. Uh, Halloween, Texas, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Wrong Turn, The Hills of Eyes. Yeah. Oh, so it's like the likes oh, of Saw. The Hills of Eyes. The Hills of Eyes, man. It's... Saw is, is a silent... cut then. Oh, Saw. Yes, yeah, Saw. That a good Even though Saw got, yeah. a bit, Saw got a bit faster than the Furious towards the end. But, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but the, the hills have eyes, Miles. That's just bringing back horrible memories there. Really horrible ones. I'll tell you one that kept me... I had to sleep with a light on for about a week. Was the very first paranormal activity. Yeah. Oh, man. I've seen that. Gives me chills, that came gives me chills out. thinking about it now. I'm Not sure that. I was in, was I in college or I'm going to write, I'm going to Google so I can try and remember what year that came out. Because I remember watching that and it was the first time I think I saw a movie that said True Story. Yeah. So I actually thought that was all real footage. I didn't think it was a reenactment. It's only when they brought out a number two, I was like, okay. So what's way then? What what scares you more then? Is it the um is it the kind of the, the, the movies that kind of build up to that jump or is it the, the psychological stuff? And the reason I ask, Miles, I know that you for sure will have seen this. Um I, Chris, I'm I can't remember, I don't know whether you saw this, but when we were massive on VR, um and we, we were showing the world the VR stuff, and this I am bringing it towards uh, the, a, a bit of a tech boast here from a Samsung part, but it's a massive show. Do you remember that VR video that we had, Miles, that was running through the you went through kind of like an institute on a wheelchair? Chris, you were nodding, so I, um, maybe you were. We it was Miss Judge, how long I've known you, Chris, and get it completely wrong. There was Sisters, which is the one where you were sat on the sofa with the doll, 
and then you looked behind you and then you heard a giggle and when you turned she was in your oh that made me oh. that made me jump um, that's the, the sisters is the one where she turns the tv on and, yeah uh, the one you're yeah, thinking of sure. sean i can't think of the name of it but it's where yeah. you're being wheeled in a wheelchair yeah and you're looking around as you're being pushed through yeah. this mental institute jason i know I know Jason's producing the show. I know you're on a mute, mate. But if you remember the name of that, let us know. But I remember putting that VR on and putting the phone in my apartment. I've got huge uh, glazed doors there. So bright night on a Saturday afternoon. I remember it so clearly. It took me about three attempts to get through that, you know, because it was genuinely. And that was like VR really bringing something like the shock horror to life. Oh, it was so that was so good. Did any of you play Affected the Manor? That was the one where you started outside and as you were walking down this path, the bats flew at you and then the doors opened and then you went inside this dark house and you had a torch. Oh, that was horrible. I watched that in Ireland, in Belfast, and in the middle of a call centre, I screamed and threw the VR off my head. <laughs> like, I'm talking, I, did fell, see. I fell off the chair, VR off my face, screamed. <laughs> Sat up, looked, and everyone in the call centre just turned around and was just looking at me. And I, was, I wasn't I was even sorry. I didn't another, another really good one. Another really good horror for VR. Mate, VR. VR, 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 VR is the one. After this, after this, I'm pulling out my VR headset. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the one was when they released the film, the, well, the re-release of the film It. They did a VR It as well, like a really horror one with the clown. Yes, my they did. God, that was terrifying. You come to three doors that says not scary, scary, or very scary, and you've got to open one. Of course, I only ever went through the not scary, but <laughs> I, think that's a, yeah. I think it's a trick. You go through the not scary one, and mate, I'm like you, Miles, throwing that VR halfway across the room. But yes, yeah, mate, you mentioned that VR. Nave mentioned it, Sean. That's what I would tell you to watch this Halloween. Watch it this Halloween. The first one's amazing. The second one's. Good. I'm not even making a false promise on that. It's not happening, man. I cannot, dude. I cannot. My Halloween. I live in Warsaw. I just need to go walk up and down the high street a couple of times, and that, that's <laughs> scary enough for me. I am not doing any of that. Any of that. Um, watching the movie stuff. But I do like it. You know what? It is a real shame this year and stuff, but I like the fact that more people are taking it on board. Kids trick or treat. What are the tricks that people, they ever come out with as well? Like I, Everyone always gets the treat, right? So has anyone ever opened a door and just said, yeah, I'll take the trick? <laughs> What's the trick? <laughs> I think they say trick or treat. And if you don't give them a treat, they trick you. And, that's and when what they... are the tricks? Because in England, it was like egg yeah, yeah, flour. In England, yeah, in England, it's eggs. In America, they're like TP trees, toilet paper, which does look fun. And also, it's like a pain to clean up. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't even, I don't even know that. So, you say you're not going to watch a scary film, Sean, but yeah. after the last podcast, we all found out that you're now a gamer. I've got game. a game for you to play, a horror game. Okay? Okay. It's called Outlast. Download oh that and Sean, Sean, play don't, Sean, don't Outlast. Do it. it is terrifying. Sean, you know, I guarantee you would rather watch every single horror movie ever made before you play that game. Really? Is Chris, let me, am I right in thinking, Chris, Outlast is the one where you, you basically don't have any weapons and you have to keep finding batteries to keep your torch on, which only stays on for like three seconds. Oh, Sean, it's not only Sean, but without giving too much away, it's... It's a game set in the dark. You have to try and find your way out, yeah, and escape. And you only have, like, a camcorder for your light. But your light only ever stays on for, like, a minute before the battery dies. So you have to, like, keep turning it off and on. And you have to keep looking for batteries all the while you're either avoiding or being chased. And, uh, yeah. I, I know that games are catatonic, catatonic. Thanks, uh, Jason, then. Thank catatonic. you, Jason. Any any of you still uh, big fans of the VR like we are, then check out Catatonic. Uh, I'm not sure where you find that now, but uh, Catatonic is a great experience. But you saying that games and how they can scare you and stuff, because it's interesting, it isn't all about films, like what we've just discussed with you, or in person with a trick or treat, and I know, I know we make parties out of it now as adults and have fancy dress. But 
for me there, the, the gaming one, I remember when I was when I was younger and my brother and I had a PlayStation, <laughs> Resident Evil. Uh, we're going back some years now, and I'm sure that they've advanced much more, but we genuinely used to get shot. Like, we, we laugh and joke about it now because I was playing it. He's, he's a good few years younger than me, so he was like genuinely just watching and helping us get through the map. And we used to be petrified at that. And it just shows how, that to me tells you how immersive these experiences can be, you know what I mean? So what was that one? Outlook or Outlast? Outlast. Outlast, Outlast. I was going to say Outlook. Outlook my, some of the emails are getting scarier. <laughs> <from management>, so, <laughs> well, just to Outlook. echo, just to echo what you just said about being immersive for gaming. Like I know yeah. I'm a I'm a big gamer, but yeah. if you're going to argue what's more scarier, a film or a game, I'd always argue a game because a game. with a film, yeah. you're just... A passenger, you're just watching something unfold. Exactly, yeah. Whereas in a game, you're physically making these choices, moving into these potentially scary areas. You're making the choices, which makes it yeah. so much more scarier uh, than ever be- than you could ever imagine. So Chris, you've, no. got to, you've got to download it. Yes. Now you've said that, Chris. Stepping away from horror and Halloween for one second. How immersive you get playing a game is one of the main reasons why I think it's Modern Warfare 2. No, it's a Black Ops. I think it's a Black Ops in Call of Duty. There's one scene where you and your partner get split up and the bad guy tells you, you basically get captured and the bad guy tells you, you got to pick up the sniper and you've got to shoot this guy and he'll let you go. And they bring the person out and he's got a bag on his head and you shoot him and then they drop the body and they walk off and then you ask where your partner is and then he just starts laughing. Yeah. And then as the character, you've got to run over to the body and you take that and he may, oh, you take the hat, the hood off his head and you end up that you shot your friend and oh my I, 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 that, I dropped the control. I was like I've got a feeling that was Modern Warfare 2. That's what I, I think, think it was. Yeah, I Modern think you're Warfare right 2. with Modern Warfare 2. And I was right. like oh. Look at look at I'm looking at you two here having a little moment there of gaming. But I'm gaming, uh, as we mentioned uh, on our last episode. And as you will notice right now, we have our Elite Gaming Tournament uh, up and running. And for you all to uh, to view and see who the winner of that will be. Chris, tell us more about this Elite Gaming Tournament or EGT. So, yeah, so EGT. This is our Elite Gaming Tournament. It is the biggest tournament that we have ever done here at Samsung UK. And it's so sick. It's for all of our elites. Everybody can tune in and watch it. This, um, by the time this is out live, we will be well into our team battles round where we're going to be having people playing Halo 5. I'm not going to tell you any of the other games just yet because I've not announced them to all of our EGT finalists. But there are some mega prizes up for grabs there. We've got 65-inch TVs. We've got Xbox Series X, which isn't even out yet gaming chairs a full gaming setup for the winners it's incredible you've got to make sure through backstage that you're tuning in and watching them we've even got prizes just for the viewers to tune in and watch us we got prizes for them as well so yeah six sick contests we got going so on. i think we, we were speaking gaming last week guys i have made my decision i have gone the xbox route and uh, Miles, I know you're not my friend at the moment for saying that. However, uh, let me know what your thoughts are about me getting the Xbox. Are you ready for EGT, guys? Are you playing in EGT? Let us know in the comments, guys. Spread the word. This is definitely one of the biggest competitions that I've ever been a part with at my time at Samsung. And we're doing it for you guys. So make sure you join in. Miles, are you going to be checking out the Elite Gaming Tournament? I am. I'll be, I will be competing and whooping gas. <laughs> competitor and when that rocket league to- round comes up i might even make a special guest appearance myself with my teammate and we'll show you exactly how to run that thing i've got a feeling rocket league might not make it to the uh to the finals just for you saying that i'm uh deleting rocket league out of the tournament now sean so <laughs> yeah love nice it if it is. <laughs> um yeah the elite game tournament where and when chris how do we how do we get involved mate every friday we have our Elite Unleashed live show uh, with myself and one of our fellow trainers, Luke Norbury. But then we're also going to be hosting two-hour live streams, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for three weeks. 
um, for all of our channel partners, watching them compete in this tournament. And then we're going to host the live final. Now, I'm not going to talk about the live final too much, but we've got something really exciting for that. Sounds awesome, guys. So something to get involved in. And don't forget, we've got all of those awesome products as well to help you and your customers in stores. We've just had the S20 FE drop. That's doing phenomenally well. And if you want to find out more around those, Mondays and Wednesdays at noon, a backstage live, which is where you'll all know Chris from, and you'll see the familiar faces such as Jason, who's with us uh, in the background now, David, Snake Bite, right, Kelly, my good friend Luke Norbury as well, where they'll give you all of that product information that you need to make a great success of those products. It's Halloween. It's Fright Night. Let us know. What's your favourite movie? What's your favourite game? Isn't it interesting that we've all taken on the Halloween theme things? I think we've been living in a year-long Halloween period, actually, this year. But... Uh, We'll talk about that on another one. Uh, guys, thanks very much for joining. And we'll catch you next time on the Three Star Podcast. Peace.